Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to uh, Teabag Buys Broken Jeeps and Tries to Fix Them. I'm so confused. <laughs> what the hell did you buy a Jeep for, Trevor? Uh, it's cheap as hell. Cheap, huh? Cheap, 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 cheap. Is that, we like cheap shit around cheap, here. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Yeah, well, fucking, you live and you learn. Oh, so here we are. Um, okay. Trying to put a ball joint in. Here's a dilemma. Let's look Okay, at so, so Trevor bought this car. It's like a Liberty Sport, what was that, like 300 bucks? Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, it got 126 clicks on it. 126,000 miles, four wheel drive Jeep. Got it for 300 bucks because the ball joint broke and they, they had to get it out of there. So we went and towed it out of there a couple days ago and Trevor uh, just got a ball joint and stuff for it. So he's gonna try to fix this thing up and flip it and make a couple bucks. And, um, or knowing him, he'll probably just drive it and go jump it in the hayfield or something. <laughs> <You'll look. laughs> but uh, yeah, he bought it because the ball joint was broke. So now we're trying to install a new ball joint with these little press things. This is a snap-on kit that I borrowed and I feel like, so if you look at the book here, it tells you, Liberty 03 to 07, install RAM, you need P111A, right? Okay. And then uh, P16A, which you have P111A, and P16A, right? Okay, great. Now, install receiver P11A. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know what any of this shit means. I usually just take a hammer to it, Good but Lord. I don't do ball joints. I try to just buy them pre-installed. <laughs> but we'll, we're gonna learn here with this uh, little ball joint tool, uh, but that's not what this video is about. Uh, it's about another three, yeah, man, it's so another awesome. cheap car that I bought. Imagine that, another car that I bought. Um, but like I said, guys, I, I'm self-employed and try to buy a couple of these cheap cars so I can fix them up and sell them. Uh, my buddy Nick uh, fixed a Volkswagen in here the other day and the people that bought his Volkswagen that he ended up selling uh, said that their Honda broke and that's why they're buying this Volkswagen. So they said, hey, I bought, I have a Honda, it's really rusty. Um, you wanna buy it for cheap? And I was like, are you kidding me? Like I just bought a $400 Civic the other day. And uh, well, needless to say, I now own an EF sedan with, uh, that doesn't start, it doesn't run. And I think the timing is messed up. They said they replaced the timing belt and maybe something got screwed up. So we're gonna try to get a timing belt uh, figured out in this thing, see what the hell's going on. I'm gonna pop the top cover here off the valve cover. So I'll probably pop the valve cover and then this uh, little side cover. And we're gonna check the timing and verify it, make sure it's on. Cause when I crank it currently, it kind of cranks kind of fast. Like it doesn't really have compression or it, do it doesn't have compression at the right time. So that's what we're gonna do. And then I'm gonna show you some of the goodies on it once I get it running, but I wanna just get this thing running. I'm getting impatient. I've had it for like almost an hour and a half now and it doesn't run yet. What? I need to get it running. Uh, but it does have this like aftermarket cruise control thing. I'm just gonna shove that out of the way so we can get at the uh, timing belt. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, I'm gonna get this thing tore apart and let you know what I find. All right, so I got the uh, EF all tore apart here. I got the valve cover off and I double checked the timing on the timing belt and it seems like it's good. So I don't know what the heck's going on with this thing. It's got, uh, the timing is good on the belt. Uh, the valve lash I double checked. I pulled all the spark plugs out of it and I said for the hell of it, let's do a spark test. Uh, see if this thing's got spark because um, it had like brand new distributor cap and stuff. So I was like, maybe they were chasing a spark problem. Sure shit, it ain't got spark. Uh, the check engine light goes on and off. So I know it's not like ECU. Um, it shouldn't be wiring related. So it's gotta be something in the distributor I'm thinking or something in the wiring possibly. I checked the fuses under the hood. Those are all good. Uh, so I got the distributor off of it. I got it up on the bench and I didn't really see anything wrong. They put new rotor, new cap, new coil, maybe new coil, I don't know exactly. Maybe new igniter as well. They were chasing this thing, that's for sure. Um, the only thing that I found is there is this little spring guy that sits in the coil. So that little spring sits in the coil. And I'm wondering if maybe it was installed backwards because it was in there, uh, something with the spring facing into the coil and then there's like a little notch that might fit into there. 
Um, not really sure to be honest. I might take a spring out of a different coil, like the really long one, to alleviate this from being a problem. Like, because I'm thinking, I'm like, man, maybe the connection from the coil isn't getting to the cap. So um, it very well could still be like a bad igniter or something or wiring, but I'm gonna see if we can fix it with just like maybe swapping the spring on the coil here and I'll let you guys know what I come up with. All right guys, I don't know where I left off with the EF, but um, turns out the car didn't have any spark and it had 30 pounds of compression in two of the cylinders and 60 in the other two. Um, I checked the timing and it appeared to be on to me, but it didn't have any spark. So I'm like, okay, we gotta at least fix the spark issue. And it had like coils and igniters and stuff in the back seat of the car. And I'm like, man, they, they were chasing their tail with this thing. But sometimes it's easier just to buy a replacement distributor. I bought this uh, distributor on Amazon two days ago and it already showed up. And as soon as I bolted this distributor on, the car started sputtering. So like when I would crank it over, it would pip it pip 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 pip. So I'm like, ah, okay. It sounds like it's low on compression now, but it at least has some fire in the hole. So I double checked the timing again, and I actually stuck an extension down in the number one cylinder, and I waited till it came all the way to the top, and I found the center point of the top, and then I checked the cam timing. The up was on the top. The lines were going across, but there's another, there's a third line on the single, some of the single cam cam gears, and I usually base my timing off of that. So the single on the bottom, you know, below the up, on the opposite side of the up on the cam gear, that line needs to correspond with the inner, um, the inner timing cover. There's like a little indentation. So, I made sure because it was it was not there so i moved it so that bottom one was indicated on the timing cover and it was like two teeth off so i was like well i'll just try it and i cranked the car over and it just kind of sputtered and sputtered but this thing's old school it's like damn near carbureted because it's got two injector throttle body injection kind of thing and uh eventually i just fed her some onions you know give her the loud pedal while i cranked it and she fired up and man, this thing runs great. It freaking runs awesome. So I topped the coolant off, it's got great heat, and I deleted the cruise control box that was in here because it seems like a, kind of like a little headache, honestly, so. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna fire this thing up quick, and I'm gonna do a light check on it. I'm gonna make sure all the lights work, and then I might take it for a ride down the road. They put like brand new axles in this thing. It's got brand new ball joints, tie rod ends, wheels, tires, lug nuts, um, bushings like everywhere. It's all brand new. So it kind of sucks that uh, they couldn't figure the motor out, but um, what do you do, right? I'm gonna fire this thing up real quick. It ain't even got a check engine light. Just freaking breathe on the key. She's got good heat. It ain't got a radio. It's got the radio delete. But good heater. Three quarters of a tank of gas. Working horn. Oh, and it's got this freaking LED that goes off with the horn in the gauge cluster. <laughs> well, that's weird. Um, all right, so I'm going to turn the lights on. Oh, dang. Look at that. The cluster lights up, so we weren't out. <laughs> So I just turned the headlights on. We're gonna check and see if we got tail lights, brake lights, all that kind of stuff. License plate, tail, tail. We got a corner light, headlight, headlight, corner light. Looks good to me. Might just do a quick uh, hit the brakes and look back kind of thing. As long as we got like one of them, we'll think we should be good. Yep, we're good. Sweet. We got hazards. This would be a freaking great winter beater for somebody too, just like the other one I just got. Yeah, we got blinkers all the way around. 
All right, time to take this thing for a rip. Well, so far so good. Car drives really good, actually. These freaking LEDs in the cluster are blinding, though. Yeah, what did you expect out of a D15? <laughs> but honestly, it drives pretty straight down the road. I know you guys probably can't see because it's so blinding on the cluster lights, but uh, yeah, not bad. Cruising 35 and no shakes, no wobbles. The brakes are a little squishy, but um, might just need a drum adjustment or something. You pump them up to get a little harder, so I don't know what's up with that, but yeah, other than that, I mean, we saved another one, guys. She's up and running. <laughs>